this is your welcome to chemistry. So let's let's just have a discussion about what is chemistry and how chemistry might impact you and what we're going to be studying. So the first thing we have to ask is, what is chemistry? And chemistry is the central science. Um, it's considered the central science because almost all the other sciences touch and use chemistry. So because of its definition, which is a study of matter and the changes it undergoes, um, it touches all the other sciences. So when we look at biology, we talk about photosynthesis and the metabolism of the body, and those are all chemical um, reactions. And so we can look at them through the lens of biology or through the lens of chemistry. When we're looking at physics, um, we're talking about how matter changes and the laws of matter, but matter is based in chemistry on how um, it is defined. Um, so when we look at it, um, chemistry, the definition is the study of matter and the changes it undergoes, and it's central. It touches everything. When you cook, that's chemistry. When you turn on a light switch, that's chemistry. When you watch TV, that's chemistry. When you use a microwave or use the oven or, you know, this lovely Zoom, that is chemistry. But when we're studying questions, we have when we're studying questions, when we're studying chemistry, we have to ask ourselves questions about what we are studying. So it's the what, why, how. What is the difference in chemistry? What is an electron configuration? So when we're starting a unit, that's when you ask those what questions. What is the difference? What is the electron configuration? What is an atom? What is chemistry? As we study things, we can ask why. Why do some elements of isotopes and others don't? Why is carbon so important to chemistry? Because the what turns into the whys, and then you ask the hows. How is a periodic table organized? How do these things work together? And using these three main questions, we can really investigate and move through an understanding of chemistry that is deeper than just memory. And when we look at chemistry, there are five main branches of chemistry. So each branch has an area of emphasis. Um, so when we look at like a basic chemistry class, that's what we're in right now, we kind of touch on a little bit of these things. But if you're going to be studying chemistry or go deeper into chemistry, or you're looking at chemistry-based careers, that you're going to be looking at a very specific part of chemistry. So let's talk about organic chemistry. That is the chemistry that has most carbon-containing compounds, as in organic chemistry is the chemistry that studies carbon. And the examples of um, like careers or uses would be like plants. So if you're a farmer, you're using nitrogen, you're trying to figure out how to make plants grow, you're a horticulturalist, um, you're gonna be really interested in organic chemistry because plants are organic. They are made of carbon. So organic chemistry is also like the study of living things or how things affect living things. Pharmaceuticals, that's really important because, well, drugs make our life better. You've got aspirin, you've got antibiotics, and how those affect and work with chemistry and how it is in um, the world and how it affects you or other living beings is really important. Then you have inorganic chemistry is the next big branch, and that is matter that does not contain carbon. So organic contains carbon, inorganic, no carbon. And these are non-living things, nothing to do with carbon, and that's minerals, metals and non-metals, and semiconductors. So if you're looking at how to make a semiconductor, if you're looking at how to make a computer and a microwave, or how things work or conduct electricity, 
you're really looking at inorganic chemistry. There are two very different applications of chemistry. Both are equally as important. Then you have physical chemistry. And this is the behavior and changes of matter and related energy changes. So um, if you're looking at physical chemistry and you're looking at um, how to speed up growth of a plant or how to increase metabolism or how a drug is going to be metabolized or any of that kind of things, then you're going to be looking at physical chemistry. And the examples that you're going to use are reaction mechanism, reaction rate. How is this going to affect that? Analytical chemistry is breaking things into its subcomponents. What goes into it? How do we break it down? And we look at this all the time. You just probably don't think of it as chemistry. So it's the components and compositions of substances. So if you are looking at a food label and you have all that information, carbs, fats, trans fats, sugars, all that lovely thing on a food label, you get that using analytical chemistry. The big things that we use it for right now are quality control, food nutrients, the labels, quality control, how much, you know, for M&Ms, there's like a certain um, amount of insect parts that can go into each of the different batches. And so, yes, M&Ms have like insects and stuff in them. All, almost all of our foods does, but the quality is what percentage is allowed. And then you have biochemistry. And the two words that go together, bio and chemistry, has biology and chemistry mixed together. And when you mix them together, you get the area of matter and processes of living things. This is your metabolism, fermentation. If you're making homemade root beer, if you are making bread rise, you're using fermentation. If you're having photosynthesis, that is out in the plants and making sure that all those processes are working, that is biochemistry. And this is your overview of chemistry. So you've got your five branches, organic, inorganic, physical, analytical chemistry, and biochemistry. And all of them relate to the central science and the definition of the study of matter and the changes it undergoes.